Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. On the ground, it's rather simple to determine which nation owns what. In the air, these lines of ownership are not so clear. This has led to the creation of two concepts, international airspace and national airspace. International airspace is the portion of the atmosphere that is not under the sovereignty of any particular country. It typically extends from the ground up to an altitude of more than 60,000 feet. On the other hand, national airspace extends up to an altitude of 60,000 feet above the country's land, as well as the waters within 12 nautical miles of the country's territorial sea. Aircraft from one country may violate another's airspace for several reasons. These include navigation errors, poor weather, pilot mistakes, and technical malfunctions. However, in some cases, this can be considered a military act of aggression and require immediate interception. Such interceptions can prove extremely tense for everyone involved, including the pilots and the commanders on the ground. Not only do the intercepting pilots have no idea what sort of situation they're entering, but one wrong move could trigger a major international incident. One such event occurred in late 2022, when a Chinese Navy J-11 fighter pilot performed an unsafe maneuver while intercepting a U.S. Air Force RC-135 aircraft. And, uh, for two, I'll just give you verbal corrections. The U.S. pilot conducted routine operations in international airspace over the South China Sea. During the intercept, the J-11 pilot flew in front of the American plane, forcing the pilot to take evasive maneuvers to avoid a collision. Given the long brewing tensions between the two nations, such a maneuver could have ended very poorly. Unfortunately, a similar situation played out two years earlier when two Russian Su-27 flanker pilots intercepted a U.S. Air Force B-52 bomber, again flying in international airspace over the Black Sea. The pilots repeatedly buzzed the aircraft, passing within 100 feet of the B-52's nose. This not only created turbulence, but restricted the B-52's ability to maneuver. Of course, the exact procedure for intercepting a potential enemy plane will vary depending on the country and the circumstances. However, there are a few general principles most nations follow. In the case of NATO countries, every interception has five stages. In stage one, radar picks up a potential unidentified aircraft. This is then reported to the nearest coordination center. In stage two, that coordination center will use the radar information it's been given, combined with the latest intelligence, to determine whether or not the aircraft needs to be investigated further. If an investigation is warranted, the center will reach out to one of the 30 aircraft NATO constantly keeps in a state of readiness for just such an occasion. That aircraft will then be scrambled in stage four, typically within 10 minutes. 
These planes will then intercept the unidentified plane, investigate, and, if needed, escort it back to its own airspace. In Stage 5, all this information is reported back to Central Control, and the scrambled aircraft will return to base. Situations like this play out hundreds of times a year across the world, as airspace is constantly being monitored by radar. In the United States, every aircraft on the radar screen has a designation identified through an aircraft transponder, be it commercial or military. However, if a radar operator comes across an unidentified aircraft, that information will immediately be sent to a command center for further evaluation. Like NATO in Europe, the United States military has fighter jets on standby all across the country in the event of a potential airspace incursion. These aircraft are fueled, loaded, and prepped so that pilots can get them airborne as quickly as possible. These pilots are kept at the ready 24 hours a day, working in shifts to ensure there is always someone to answer the call in the event of a scramble call. As these events happen so quickly, it's not uncommon for a pilot to not know the situation or their destination until they are already taxiing to the runway. The escort part of an interception is where something will most likely go wrong. Though it's possible an aircraft's instruments malfunctioned or the pilot made an error. To ensure escorts are correctly done, countries sometimes practice with one another. This is a joint escort drill between Romania, the UK, and Italy, with six typhoons and two F-16s performing a mock interception of a Romanian C-27 Spartan transport aircraft. The goal here would be to prevent the aircraft from performing evasive maneuvers while keeping close contact with the pilot throughout the escort process. Though scrambling fighter jets is often a rapid process, some particularly vulnerable countries have taken to enforcing their borders via air policing. Generally carried out by NATO, this is where aircraft are deployed to monitor and protect a country's airspace to prevent unauthorized or hostile aircraft from entering. This is typically carried out on a rotational basis with various NATO countries taking turns deploying fighter jets to patrol the skies over the nation in question. Though this often takes place during times of heightened tension or conflict, some countries will request routine monitoring simply to ensure their own air sovereignty. NATO also makes use of patrol aircrafts called AWACS. This stands for Airborne Early Warning and Control. The process utilizes a specific type of surveillance aircraft that is designed to detect and track other aircraft at long ranges, thus providing reliable warnings of any potential threats. The most common aircraft used for this process is the Boeing E-3A, which features an easily identifiable rotating radar array. These advanced sensors, combined with the fact that the plane is airborne, give it superior effectiveness over many ground-based radar systems.
the average E3A, will have a crew of more than 20 airmen, with 13 to 19 specifically tasked with monitoring the plane's various scanning equipment. Nations that have extensive sea borders have even more threats to consider. Not only can bad actors enter their airspace, but also their territorial waters using ships and even submarines. For this reason, countries like Japan have developed extensive maritime patrol operations. This process typically involves equipping an aircraft with specialized sensors and equipment, like radar, sonar, cameras, and communication systems. These systems allow the aircraft to detect and track vessels in the maritime environment and gather other relevant data, such as weather conditions and sea state. The heart of Japan's naval patrol operations is the Kawasaki P-1. Though it looks like a standard commercial plane, the P-1 is actually one of the most advanced patrol planes in the world. The P-1 is a large aircraft, nearly 125 feet long and with a 116-foot wingspan. It was first introduced in 2013 and featured a state-of-the-art avionics suite, advanced sensors, and a range of more than 5,000 miles. Aside from robust sensors, the aircraft also carries a variety of bombs, mines, depth charges, and torpedoes, as well as missiles for air-to-ground combat. Among its most useful devices are the sono buoys. These can be preloaded and dropped from slots in the fuselage or manually deployed from the inside. Once in the water, they immediately begin searching for potential underwater anomalies, sending all of the information back to the P-1's sensor suite. If the plane were to encounter a potential threat, it could engage it immediately. Of course, being on the water during an aircraft flyover can be particularly dangerous, whether the plane in question is a P-1 or not. In many cases, boats may be ill-equipped to communicate with the patrolling aircraft, leaving lots of room for potentially dangerous misunderstandings. Though the pilot will generally try to get close to the boat to determine whether or not it is a threat, this can sometimes result in hostile action. This process is even more critical when a military ship encounters an unidentified boat. These boats can contain explosives and other threats that could endanger the vessel and her crew. As with fighter jets, boats will scramble their crews to readiness positions the moment a suspicious vessel is sighted. They will then use loudspeaker warnings and other means necessary to warn of the incoming boat. Unknown small craft, this is not the warship. Everyone's your four. I have heard that course, but your intentions remain unclear. The crew of the Spanish warship Mendez Nunez is practicing such a drill with one of their fast boats playing the part of an unidentified craft. These sorts of exercises are imperative, so crews know what to do in the event of a real suspicious craft scenario. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.